honorable member for Laxane and Parkland does have the option uh, to close debate on behalf of the minister, uh, provided that there is no other individuals wishing to speak. I am prepared to allow the honorable member for Laxane and Parkland to close debate. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, you know, it's different as a private member to be able to carry some of these on behalf of the minister. I think it speaks volumes to uh, the cooperation, the collaboration that we have on, on this side, uh, Mr. Speaker. Again, I, I understand through looking through some of the parliamentary procedures that this is probably the first time in 20 some odd years in this House that this has been afforded. Uh, oftentimes we hear that as, you know, quote unquote backbenchers, or we like to call ourselves private members, that we don't have a ton of input into the government. And I'm here to tell you, and, and you can see full well for those you know, 10 or 12 people watching at home tonight, that we ob obviously do. And the fact that when there was a situation that took place, um, you know, in my constituency that predicated this, and we saw this iceberg coming, that we immediately, you know, talked with the First Nations folks, with Chief Tony up on that end. We talked with the mayor of, of Laxinan County. We were dealing with the Sand and Gravel Association. It went into uh, the minister's office, and her, his chief of staff is absolutely a rock star. So shout out to Pam Livingston on this one. They were all over it, you know, and I'd said before, like a pit bull on a pork chop. It's amazing how quick people moved and came together on this, understanding the impacts and the ramifications. And uh, I can't remember the writing or the constituency of members' office. I want to say Rutherford. Rutherford, correct. I was going to say decor, but I always get the two mixed up. Um, when he was mentioning about the, the process and the consultation, it absolutely did take place through and through on this. And again, on this, uh, uh, this particular case, when it was overturned, as the member from Mill Woods had pointed out last night so eloquently, it was essentially a technicality of the court. It was an appeal to a decision. It wasn't protesting the original decision. It was appeal to decision and essentially part of the understanding of how the judicial process worked. And this clarifies, again, both sand, agri or the, the gravel, marl, and clay. So again, we still have the, the ability to have the environmental impact assessment, although it's never been used for a number of years in pit operations, it still remains in effect in that, in that act. And coming back to this particular pit, why it's of such interest, as the member from Rutherford had pointed out on, on reclamation, the geological formation is actually unique in this area. We have a lot of opportunities for frac sand, so fractionation sand for the up, upstream side of the, the equation. And it's kind of a little uh, known effect actually that essentially 70% of the frac sands that we bring in are actually imported from the United States. You have two geological formations being either the Wisconsin formation or down in Texas. And here's a part of our economy being diversified. So Wayfinder themselves, they have two, um, two plants up in place, the one up at Glen Avis and the other one is actually sitting out in, uh, in Obed in uh, West Yellowhead. Now, the formation itself, when you look at the, the, the area and the cooperation, the collaboration, on, and I'll say collaboration, it's not just consultation, but collaboration with the First Nations folks in that area as well, as well as the, the local community, the county and the farmers, they took marginal farmland. And the unique thing about this, this operation is you're not removing tons of trees, you're not stripping off, it's literally marginal grasslands. So when you only have to strip about four to six inches, maybe in the most part, use a pump to literally just suck out and vacuum the sand that's applicable for this defractionation process, have the wash station, wash station, I should say, right alongside the highway. This is the epitome of, of economic diversification, weaning ourselves off of importing materials for our energy sector. And that's why it was kind of that, that catalyst, that tipping point, I guess, if you would. The other really good side effect that came out of this was the Sand and Gravel Association and the RMA forming a new board that they have members sitting on it so that if there are any issues that rise up from those two organizations, that they then take care of it before it gets to this point again as well. So with that, I really uh, appreciate everyone's input to this. I really appreciate everyone's support. And it's been an absolute honor to open and close um, on this bill. Thank you.